Hello everyone, and this video is going to be about adding CSS to our HTML. So step one is to create an HTML document. So I have pulled up just kind of like a little playground folder. I'm going to make a basic HTML document. So maybe adding CSS.HTML. And then I'm going to do my basic boilerplate. Um, again, these meta tags are not required. You don't have to put them in if you don't want to. Um, so keep that in mind. Now there are three ways you can add styles to your HTML. There's two old ways that are no longer recommended and don't work well, and there's the new way which is using CSS. So I'll just show you an old way. So let's go ahead and just make a um, h1, call it welcome, and then maybe a p tag and say welcome to my site. So if I open this, let's show it in Finder, then I'll open it in Chrome. Go away. Right here. So I have a welcome and welcome to my site. There's a few different ways I can add styles to this. So let's say I wanted to take this H1, this welcome right here, and make it red. To do that, the old way would be to go add a style attribute, style equals, and then I would put my styles inside of here. Color red with a semicolon. Save and refresh, and now welcome is red. And let's say I wanted to make the background on this p tag a different color. So let's say style equals background blue. Save and refresh, and now my background is blue. Now the problem with this is that it is extremely difficult to keep up with, and it's a ton of work because you have to literally add a new attribute to every single tag you put in there. This is just not sustainable nowadays when you have hundreds or even thousands of tags on a website. It's just not even, it's not possible. So this is the old way that we used to have to do it. We don't do it that way anymore. The second way we can do it is by adding a style tag at the top of our HTML document. So style, style, and inside of here we can put our tags. And this is where that, that rule comes in, that selector and then attribute rule that we talked about in the last video. So we could add h1, open our curly braces, and then maybe do and do color equals green. Color colon green, save refresh and now the welcome is green and what this will do is make all h1s on the page green this should be green too refresh and this is green as well so what this does is this selects all h1s on the page and applies these styles to them you can already see that this is a lot more sustainable because we can apply it to a lot of different things it, we can just change this here. If we wanted to change the color, we only have to change it in one place instead of going to each individual tag and changing that color. So this is already better, a lot better. Um, so we could do, come down here and do P and change the background to yellow. Refresh, and this will do it for all P tags. If I duplicate this a bunch of times, it does it to all of them. One thing to note is that if you do the same thing twice, so let's say we have an H1 there and we have an H1 here, and tell it color red, it reads the bottom one, the last one. So make sure not to select the same thing twice, because you'll, you'll run into a lot of trouble. This gets a little bit more challenging if you have large CSS files to make sure you don't accidentally select the same thing twice. Um, but what it, when you do, it will read the last one, and it will overwrite the previous one. So just keep that in mind. So the first way to do it would be style equals color blue and refresh. And that overwrites it because inline styles always take precedence. Do not do this. This is not dry code and it is not modular code, which are the two things you really want to strive for. Dry code, and we'll just take a, a moment to segue. Dry code, D-R-Y, stands for don't repeat yourself. We do not want to repeat ourselves. Don't repeat yourself. You want to write your code in a way that you're not writing the same thing over and over and over again. And if I'm sitting here taking this and applying it to all my different tags, it gets really annoying really quickly. So if I want to apply this to the P tags, I have to put it in there. 
and now this is blue, and if I want it in that one too, now this one's blue, bleh, it gets really annoying. If I change this to green up here, it applies to that one, and it applies to this one too, but then it gets overridden by the inline style. But you'll notice that blue, blue, but none of the rest of these are, so I would still have to just come down and copy and paste that in each place, and it gets super, super annoying very quickly. So let me undo all that crap. It makes me want to cry myself to sleep. Because I hate inline styles, because I used to, we used to have to do it that way for everything, and it was awful. So it is not dry, and it's not modular. Modular means you can break your code out into lots of little pieces that you can reuse. Think of it like Legos. You want to be able to take a little piece of code, write it once, and then apply it in a bunch of different places. That way you're not having to, to do the same thing over and over again. Modularity is kind of an extension of dry, don't repeat yourself, but if it's modular, it means you can pull a little piece out, like this H1, and apply it to a lot of different places. So, right now, if I write all my styles in the top of this HTML document, I have to write the exact same styles or a, a subsection of them in every single HTML document I have. Think about Amazon. Let's go to Amazon. Amazon.com. How many web pages does Amazon have inside of here? Every single page. Every page for every item. Let's look at Guess Who. Every page for every item is a separate HTML file. Now they have templating, I'm sure, where they've got an item page, they've got a page that's kind of like the, the best thing. So, I mean, it's not literally hundreds of thousands of HTML files, but I can guarantee you they've got at least a thousand HTML files here. How annoying would it be to be the developer who has to come in and write and update CSS on a thousand files if they want to change a single color? That would, that would not be sustainable. So this is better, but it's still not modular. It's dry to an extent in that you're not repeating yourself as much. But if you have multiple files, it's still you have to repeat yourself all the time. So instead, we want to break this out into a separate file. This is where CSS comes in. What we can do is add a separate file. So let me add styles.css here. And I can take this stuff cut it out, put it into styles, get rid of these tags, and right now it's going away. It doesn't do anything because we, because we haven't linked it over here yet. But what we're going to do is we're going to link this file to this file. Notice they're in the same directory. They don't have to be. It's just easier if they are, and I'll show you later once we get into the back end how to link them from elsewhere. But inside of the head, to link it, you use a link tag. Go figure. The link has two required attributes, rel, which is style sheet because it's CSS, a CSS style sheet, and href, which gives the location just like in an anchor tag. So the location is simply styles.css. I know this because it's in the same directory, so when I refresh this, boom, all of our styles are applied. But the cool part is that I can go in here and say, make another HTML document, another.html, and I can make my boilerplate HTML5. Let me make that go away so, I, so we can see it more easily. I don't care about these meta tags right now. And give it a body. So h1 another file. And make a p tag. This is another p tag. And save this. I can show this in Finder and open this with Chrome. Another p tag, but if I link that same style sheet and refresh, the same file styles are applied. So now, if I've got one or two or ten or a thousand different HTML documents, as long as they link to the same styles, I can change one the style in one place, and it's reflected in every single HTML document. That's why CSS is amazing. One of the many reasons. But that's why CSS is so, it was such a step forward, because it allowed us to update it in one place and then have it applied to all the different HTML files. We used to have to go into each file and update it every single time we wanted to change anything. 
That is how you can link CSS to HTML, and you should always use that. There are very, very, very few times that you should use inline styles or even the style tags. Every once in a while, it might, it might be necessary, but it should almost never happen. I've never had to use it in my entire time doing websites. Everything I've, do, I've been able to do with, with external CSS files. So that is how you can link CSS to HTML. I hope you have a wonderful day.